Welcome to the final lesson of the course. The aim for this lesson is to build out a resilience plan for your future. As I just mentioned, we'll wrap up the course this week with a resilience plan. First, we will review the key concepts of resilience. You have come a long way from where you have started throughout this course. We have looked at various aspects of resilience. Remember, resilience is not something you are born with. It is something you can learn. You have learned a variety of tools and techniques that build up your resilience and literally change your mental, physical, and emotional responses to stressful situations. Let's review the main concepts. First, we'll review social resilience. You can build social resilience by including a diverse group of people in your life. Social resilience means accepting and caring for others. You can build your social resilience by connecting with others. This may mean sending a thank you note, stating your gratitude, or giving someone a hug. Next is mental resilience. The various aspects of mental resilience are self-efficacy, outlook and perspective, and values and beliefs. Ways that you can build mental resilience are learning about your goals and purpose and make every day meaningful to you. You can also work on progressing towards a more positive outlook on life. Working on mental resilience also relates to emotional resilience. Emotional resilience means trying to include positive emotions, realistic optimism, regulating emotions, and controlling impulses. As a way to improve emotional resilience, you can work on each of these factors. One way to do so is by noting three positive emotions or experiences for every one negative. A positive experience may be a hike in the woods for someone, or for someone else, it may be painting or reading. Going for a hike is also an example of physical resilience. Aspects of physical resilience include fitness, physical activity, nutrition, and rest and recovery. These are important because they enable your body to react to stressful events. If you are active, you are more able to overcome obstacles and endure and bounce back. One suggestion is to stand up and take at least a few steps away from your computer every hour. Now on to the APA Resilience Handbook. This handbook asks the question, how do people deal with difficult events that change their lives? The death of a loved one, loss of a job, serious illness, other attacks or traumatic events all happen throughout our, throughout our lives. And these are examples of very challenging life experiences. Many people react to such circumstances with a flood of strong emotions and a sense of uncertainty. Yet, people generally adapt well over time to life-changing situations and stressful conditions. Our resilience course has gone over what enables them to do just that. It's an ongoing process that requires time and effort. And this process, as you know, takes a number of steps. The APA resilience brochure will take you through a journey of building resilience, much like the journey that we have been through together. You'll look at various factors of building resilience. When you're on the website, you will find the creating your personal stress management plan. Following on this website, if you follow along, is a 10-point plan that will help you to manage stress and build resilience. All of these ideas can lower stress without doing any harm. 
Keep in mind that none are quick fixes, but they'll lead you towards a healthy and successful life. The plan is divided into four parts. Tackling the problem, taking care of your body, dealing with emotions, and making the world better. When you read over the plan, you'll notice that you can come up with a bunch of ideas for each point. Please don't think you should try all of them. The plan is supposed to help you reduce stress, not give you more stress. Try out some of the ideas and then stick to one or two ideas for each point. You might notice that this plan is almost like building a college or work resume. This is a way to build a resume and you are doing it to manage your life to maybe increase happiness, and to prepare for success. The purpose is not to cram in activities that impress someone else. This method and approach will ensure that you are living in harmony with all aspects of your life. Having a plan is a great step in the right direction to building a more resilient self. However, putting the plan into action and sustaining these changes is also an important piece of the puzzle. Throughout this course, we have discussed many new behaviors and skills, from practicing gratitude to increasing physical activity. During this last week, we have reiterated some basic principles related to change and implementing the skills you have learned. First, how do we change? We change by really knowing ourselves and looking at our current behaviors. Remember the lecture about goals and purpose? Do your goals and purpose match your daily activities? When these are in line, you have probably noticed feeling like your life is in order. The next question is how do we tackle a task or skill that might not be in line with our goals, but it is a task that is important to our health? For example, starting a new exercise routine or incorporating more nutritious food. The first step is to get to know yourself. Throughout this course, we have completed various activities to help answer this question. In order to be successful in adding the resilience plan into your life, you need to know how you change and what your current habits are. Some questions to ask yourself are, do you need to be held accountable or do you defy accountability? Do you need to start small or do you need to start big? Do you need strict guidelines or do you prefer some wiggle room? Think about these questions as you start to build your resilience plan. One more thought about change in developing your resilience plan is related to willpower, or what some people call self-control or self-regulation. We have briefly mentioned self-control and developing willpower earlier in this course. Research has shown that people with better self-control are happier and healthier. To a certain extent, willpower can be developed However, researchers have noticed that we all have a certain amount of willpower or self-control and that it is not unlimited. That being said, when you are developing new habits, skills, or starting a new task such as the resilience plan, it is important to think about how you will incorporate it into your life so that you do not need to depend on self-control or willpower to make it happen. A resource that could be helpful if you are interested in learning more about this topic is Gretchen Rubin's recently published book, Better Than Before. Back in August of 2015, I received this book via an interlibrary loan, and it is a great introduction to habits and happiness. As the title suggests, Better Than Before, it is about creating beneficial lifelong habits. This book doesn't prescribe which habits a person should create, rather it's a comprehensive exploration of how you make lasting habits. And the chapters include self-knowledge, 
pillars of habits, the best time to begin, desire, ease, and excuses, unique, just like everyone else, and everyday life in utopia. Bringing back to the resilience plan, the most important aspect is to know how you react to expectations and behavior change. Then apply a strategy that matches your reaction. For example, Ruben states that one type of reactor is an upholder. I am definitely in that category. I identify the most with being an upholder and partly with being a questioner. Upholders, in Ruben's eyes, conform to both inner and outer temptations. Questioners only conform to inner expectations that make sense to them. A third type is an obliger. Obligers have trouble keeping their own promises to themselves, but meet the expectations of others. The fourth type are rebels, who don't really like to meet the expectations of others whatsoever. Within the book, you can take a quiz to find out what your own tendency is and, ex and create an example of a custom strategy. An example of a customized strategy is to do your research if you're a questioner. And if you're a rebel, define a behavior as part of your personal identity. Those are the steps you can take if you are looking to change your behavior. Another useful distinction mentioned in the book is to think about whether you are an abstainer or a moderator when you're changing behavior. Abstainers find it easy to give up something altogether. Moder moderators find it easier to tell themselves they can have something in moderation. Most people think they're moderators, but if you're struggling with a behavior, you might want to try the abstinence route. The book also explores some obstacles to developing better behaviors, like 10 categories of loopholes, also known as the little lies that we tell ourselves. One that I found most interesting was the pitfall of the finish line. When there's a finish line in sight, for example, dieting before an event, training for a marathon, giving something up for Lent, the good behaviors that we pick are easily abandoned once the finish line is reached. Instead, you should think about adopting a behavior forever. Through the book, Better Than Before, it does talk about the appeal of a decision-free good behavior. Ruben doesn't talk much about how to turn a repeated behavior into a habit or how to break existing habits. But if you do want more on that topic, I highly suggest to check out a fascinating article called The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business. As I have mentioned, this is the last lecture of the course. We have covered many topics related to resilience during the past eight weeks. When you are working on your resilience plan, remember progress is much more important than the unattainable goal of perfection. Lastly, I would like to leave you with a moment to rejuvenate before heading back to your office, your next meeting, or your next activity for the day. First, let's take an inventory of how our body feels right now. Are there any areas that are tense? As we focus on our breathing, try to focus on relaxing any areas that may be tight. If you're comfortable, close your eyes and turn off the lights and focus solely on your breathing. Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Place one hand on your stomach and focus on the rising and falling of your stomach with each breath. As you take a breath and the stomach fills with air, the stomach should expand. As you release a breath, the stomach will fall. Focus on the rising and falling of the stomach. If the chest is rising and falling, you are not yet engaged in deep breathing. 
and you need to focus on inhaling air into the stomach. Count up while breathing in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and down while breathing out. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Mental imagery can, techniques can be helpful. Think of inhaling new clean air while releasing toxic, stressful air. Visualization techniques can also be utilized. Picture the air as it goes in and out. Visualize a balloon inside the stomach expanding and collapsing with each breath. In and out. Breathe in and out. You should practice this several times a day rather than only when stressed in order to habituate the response. Now slowly wiggle your toes and your fingers, roll your so shoulders to wake up your body. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Remember, you can incorporate these techniques throughout the day. For instance, every time you hear a bell, such as your phone ringing, take three deep breaths. This will clear your head and help you prepare for whatever is on the phone line or in the text. Thank you, and you are now ready to start your next activity and finish out the lesson this week. It has been my pleasure to walk you through this course. Resilience is a process, and there will be hills and valleys throughout the journey. But if you work on developing the skills we have discussed during this course, you will be well on your way to bouncing back from the setbacks that happen in our lives.